Good morning, I'm Wei Yang, and I'm from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and this is a joint work with Wan Li Ouyang, Hong Sheng Li, and Xiao Gang Wang. So, uh, what is human pose estimation? Basically, given an image or video, the goal of human pose estimation is to recover the body joint positions of articulated limb, as demonstrated in this video. There are quite lots of applications of human pose estimation, such as activity or action recognition, interactive game systems, and clothing parsing. But human pose estimation itself is, is not a trivial task. Human limbs are highly articulated and flexible, hence people can appear with a variety of poses. Meanwhile, viewpoint variation leads to problems such as foreshortening. Moreover, the occlusion caused by clothing also make human pose estimation more difficult. To tackle this problem, a basic question is how to represent the highly articulated human body. Actually, in figure drawing, artists draw a cylinder for each body part and then join up the cylinders to construct the whole body. Similarly, pictorial structures use two-dimensional uh, part templates to match uh, body parts and encode the spatial relationships between body parts by springs. A problem is that even projection of a simple cylinder into two-dimensional space results in many different appearances. So one has to explicitly evaluate uh, many different possible in-plane and out-plane orientations to find a good match to a part template. To better handle the large variations, the mixture of many parts model has been proposed each part is clustered into several mixtures according to its appearance, and each mixture has its own unary template for detection. On the other hand, the pictorial structure are tree-structured models and suffer from the double counting problem. There are also lots of study on the structure of the graphs, such as the trees, latent trees, loopy graphs, or even the fully collected graphs. However, these models are usually used for post-processing. Recently, the, st the state-of-the-art performance on pulse estimation are based on deep neural networks. These kinds of methods predict heat maps for each body part by full convolutional networks, and these approaches benefit from better feature representations, and they facilitate the use of deeper networks such as VGG, GoogleNet, or ResNet. However, geometric constraints between body parts are usually missing or only used for post-processing. Uh, since the features and the structure model are learned independent, these two parts may produce suboptimal solution. Hence, in this work, we bridge the gap between uh, deep models and the structure modeling. Specifically, we incorporate the deep models and the expressive mixture of parts model into an end-to-end -end framework. So here we show how our method works. If we train the deep models without considering the global pose consistency, many high response regions to the head of unallocated people will be produced, and the error will be backpropagated to update the model parameters, and this is inappropriate. That's why we claim that the local evidence is weak and ambiguous. By considering the geometric relationships between body parts during the training stage, we are able to learn better representations. So next we will introduce our framework in details. We formulate the human pose estimation problem by using a graph model G. Here the vertices specify the position and the mixture type of body parts. The vertices are modeled by a front-end CNN. The edges model the pairwise spatial relationships between body parts. Uh, a node sends a message to each of its neighbors and uh, receives messages from each neighbor, which is indicated by the arrows. The proposed framework can be viewed as two components. 
The first component is a front end CNN for learning feature representations of body parts, which followed by a softmax layer and a logarithm layer. And the output of the front end CNN are score maps of body parts with multiple mixture types. The second component is the message parsing layers for conducting inference and learning on the structures of body parts. Specifically, each message parsing layer performs one iteration of message parsing algorithm in a forward pass. Finally, the final score map of each body part is, ob is obtained by computing the maximum value over mixture parts. Given an image i, the full score f of a post configuration can be computed in a forward pass. In this uh, function, L is the XY location of each part and uh, T is the mixture type of each part. And the full score consists of the unary term uh, and the pairwise term. The unary term uh, models the part appearance by the front end CNN and the pairwise term are modeled by message parsing layers which encode the spatial relationships between body parts. So first we introduce our front end CNN. It is a fully convolutional network. Uh, given an input image, the outputs of this network are score maps of body parts with mixture types. Uh, remind that the mixture types of each body part are clustered by its relative location corresponds to its parent body part. Then the score maps are normalized by the following softmax layer and then are transformed into the log space by the logarithm layer. Notice that the front end CNN does not take the global post consistency into consideration, hence the score maps may not be accurate. Now we turn to the pairwise terms. Uh, the pairwise terms is modeled by the message passing layers. We incorporate the deformable mixtures of parts model to encode the spatial relationships of pairs of parts. Here, uh, D is the uh, relative location between two parts, and omega is the parameters of a spring that favors certain relative locations over the others. It greatly reduces the parameter space compared to learning the spatial relationships by convolutional kernels. So to infer the best post configuration, we use the maximum algorithm. We denote mij as the message sent from part i to part j, and uh, ui as the belief of part i, which is a combination of the unary term and the received messages. Then the maximum algorithm updates the messages and beliefs iteratively, and the optimal location and the optimal mixture type of each part can be obtained by the maximum assignment. In experiment, we found that uh, three layer, uh, three message passing layers produce satisfactory results. We can see that the results are getting better when we increase the number of message passing layers. We first evaluate our method on two widely used public dataset, the LSP dataset and the Flick dataset. Uh, the qualitative results uh, on LSP dataset are shown in this slide. The proposed method is robust to highly articulated poses with variant orientation, clutter background, and occlusions. We also report the percentage of correct parts on the LSP dataset. The higher, the better. Here, the red bar denotes our method. We can see that our method can get the highest PCP value in average compared with previous methods. We demonstrate the percentage of detected joints curve on both the LSP dataset and the Flick dataset. Here, the red curve denotes our method, uh, also the higher the better. To demonstrate the generalization ability, we directly use the full body model trained on the LSB dataset to predict the poses on the 205 test images of another dataset, uh, uh, the image parse dataset. The visualized results are pretty satisfactory. 
Uh, the PCP results also outperform previous methods. Uh, some of these methods are trained on, directly on this data set. Uh, now we turn to the component analysis. So to see the effectiveness of considering global post consistency in training the network, we can start by training the baseline model that is only train the front end CNN. This model achieves 60.1% PCP. Uh, then we train the front end CNN first and fix it to train the message passing layers. In this way, the performance is improved by 14%. Finally, we jointly train the whole framework. The performance is further improved by about 7%. We'd like to mention that our framework is flexible for both the tree structured model and the looping models. We add a symmetry constraint between left and the right knees, and we found that this constraint is very helpful for reducing the double counting problem in legs. Uh, there are also some interesting works which considers the structure when training the network in this CDPR, such as choose structure feature learning for post estimation, Corella's human post estimation with iterative error feedback, and weights convolutional purse machine. Uh, in summary, we propose a novel end-to-end -end framework which bridges the gap between structural modeling and deep learning. To facilitate structural modeling, we propose a new message passing layer which is flexible to both the tree-structured or loopy-structured models. We'd like to thank you for listening. For more details and questions, welcome to our poster session. Thank you.